We thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me, all of you. We pray that every ear is anointed to hear. Every heart is open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. And we bless you for it. And we thank you for it this day. Now, Father, we thank you that we covered the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. <clears throat> and I speak the peace of God over each and every individual. I declare right now that your hand moves mightily upon this earth and upon the lives of your people. I thank you right now that our faith is stirred up today. And we take authority over every demonic force that will try to disrupt in any way, shape, fashion, or form the word of God from moving forward. And so we thank you in advance right now, Father, for your goodness. We thank you in advance for your grace. We thank you in advance for your mercies that are new every morning. And great is thy faithfulness. For you are a good God. And there is none like unto you. So we bless you in advance. We thank you in advance for the good word of God that comes forward today. And so, Father, we believe that we receive to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. We bless you and we thank you for it now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. We just thank you guys for showing up today. We want you to take this opportunity to click share. Um, your likes, your subscribes. If you're on our YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe. If this is your first time coming on, click the notifications button so that you can be alerted of new content that's being uploaded um, to our YouTube channel. If you're on Facebook, we want to thank you. We want you to set some watch parties now for people that need to hear this word that's coming forward today. As you saw in this intro, we're going to be dealing with extreme faith today. God is dealing with me about some things and we're uh, as I was working on this series, he's just starting to speak to me about some other areas that we need to address and to discuss. And in these days and times, we need faith. No matter, Listen, we need faith more than ever. Listen, we've always needed it because the Bible says the just live by faith. And so we got to understand that your faith is going to cause you to be able to move mountains. Your faith is going to be able to cause you to gain new territory. Your faith will get you out of any dilemma and situation that you currently find yourself in. Your faith has to be sparked right now. Your faith has to be fed. And so my job today is to stir your faith up, is to teach you the word of God, but also to encourage you and to strengthen you, to let you know that, listen, you can make it, you can move forward, and you will move forward in Jesus' name. So listen, tell somebody now, log on, because God is gonna speak expressly to you today. I'm excited. The spirit of God is already upon me. He has already been ministering to me personally, and I'm so excited and ready to come in and minister to you guys today. So go ahead. If you need to get your coffee, go run and get it real quick. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Get down here now. Tell people to log in now. I'm telling you, God is going to speak to you today. So we've already prayed. And so I want to um, start this new series, Extreme Faith. And I specifically want to deal with something where this faith is concerned. I want to talk to you about seven steps to the highest kind of faith so that if you begin to function in these areas and work on these things in these seven realities, these seven realities I want to talk to you about. We're going to get started today. I won't finish it today, but we're just going to start this series. And I want to take my time. Not only do I have my prophetic hat on, but I also have my teacher's hat on that I want to minister and to sow this word into you. And so I call myself, I'm a prophetic teacher. However you want to call it, a prophetic pastor teacher, just call me anointed. That's all I care about. As long as I'm anointed by God to get this thing done. And so to talk about extreme faith, I'm a person, I love to give definition of things and to kind of start things off to make sure that everybody is on the same page. And so when God um, started dealing with me about this, Actually, it was some time ago, a few months ago, um, that I believe that the Spirit of God was talking to me about some things and dealing with this faith and to begin to um, bump our faith up to a whole nother level, to start believing bigger, to start dreaming bigger, to start asking for bigger and greater and more. What do you mean? To consume it upon our own lust and our own desires? No, it's for the kingdom of God advancement. But God is saying this, some things my people have not encountered 
or had happen in their lives just simply from the fact that they never asked me for it. They never desired, they never, they never dared me to do it for them and to manifest this thing for them. He says, now it's time to take the brakes off. He says, you've been cautious too long. You've been timid too long. And he says, now is the time. Now is the time for you to move forward. And now is the time for you to advance. This word extreme, this word extreme, when we're talking about extreme faith, what are you talking about, Pastor Mike? I'm talking about existing this type of faith that exists at a very high degree. It's, it, it's, it's exceeding the ordinary, the, just ordinary things. I like this definition, this one simple word, radical, radical faith. Just saying, you know what? I'm going to just throw caution to win. All right, God, what you want me to believe for? What you want me to do that I can't do without you? And that's what God wants you to start engaging in some projects that you can't do it without him. We've been playing safe too long. Some people have been playing safe too long, just believing for stuff that only that you could do and not only God could do. See, I'm telling you, God says, I got to get you to stretch now. It's time for you to step out on faith. It's time for you to believe something bigger. He says, it's time for you to believe for some buildings your credit score can't get you. It's time for you to believe for some stuff that the money in the bank can't pay for, that now the favor got to show up. God, if you don't show up, I'm a, it's like sink or swim. God, you got to show up. It's like Peter. See, I'm getting excited. Like I got to calm myself down. But it's like Peter. He said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. I'm talking water walking faith. I'm talking about stuff you only read about in the Bible that now it's time to see that you are the living epistle, that you're going to see some demonstrations of the glory of God, where the teaching of the word and the demonstration of the spirit are coming together. It is not only you just hearing about these things and it being stories to you. This is about to be your life, a life of faith, a life where you begin to dream bigger than you've ever dreamed. God is pulling you out. I don't care if you're in your 60s. I don't care if you're in your 70s, your 80s, your 40s, your 30s, your 20s, your teens, whatever. God says, I'm just looking for somebody that's going to believe big of me so I can do something extreme through you. It also means to exceed the ordinary, the usual or the expected. He says it's time to shake some stuff up. It's time to shake some things up now. It's time to shake some things up. And this is a radical transformation, a radical transformation that God is doing in the people's lives. And he says this, I want you to begin to encourage. I want you to teach. I want you to strengthen my people in this thing that I'm doing in their lives. And he says, now is the time. Now is the time for this extreme faith to come forward. So I'm excited for everybody involved. It's no more just talking about it. It's about being about it. So now you're going to begin to speak things, but now you're stepping out. Your actions are going to catch up to the words you've been saying. And so God is saying this. Listen, you've been dreaming about coming off those medications. You coming off now. You've been dreaming about moving into that new home. It's time for you to move in now. I don't care what the associations try to say, that people try to keep you out of places that God is trying to get you into. I'm telling you now, it's going to be extreme stuff. God going to have to remove some people just so that position can be open for you. God is going to have to start raising up some stuff just to get you there. Whatever it is, I don't care because Satan hates this. Satan has been locking in in areas and territories for years. And God says, my people are about to invade areas that Satan has had under lock and key for so long. I'm moving them into it. And so what Satan would try to do, he will try to disrupt your thinking to shut you down from moving into this new season. So I come against any attack against your mind, any attack against your body, any attack against your money, any attack against your family, any attack against your relationship, any attack against your children. Whatever it is, God is saying your faith is going to transform and change and turn that thing around in Jesus name. All right. OK, now I got that all out. OK. I'm coming out the gate blazing. So now, 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 now. Okay, 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 let's reel this in now. So come on, let's dig into this. He says, what are these seven steps, these seven realities, these seven keys, these seven points I want to start talking about? So today I want to start talking about number one, the, to, to, to develop this type of extreme faith, this type of mountain moving, burden removing, 
yoke destroying power to manifest is number one, the integrity of the word of God. What you mean? It's just that simple. The integrity of the word of God. First, you need to know that the word of God is actually what it declares itself to be. You got to believe God's word. You got to believe God's word. You got to believe God's word. There are many people who want to just just go around and float in the spirit. But now when it comes to the word of God, it's the anchor to your soul. Do you have enough understanding, revelation, insight, knowledge? Do you believe that God's word is true? You got to understand something that the word of God is God speaking to us now in the present, not just past, not just future tense. You see, that's why this is important to know, because that means that the word of God is always relevant. It's always relevant. It's not antiquated. It's not outdated. It's always relevant. And so we got to trust God and we got to believe God. The book of Hebrews, chapter four, verse 12. In the New Living Translation, it reads it like this. It says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two edged sword cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. And watch this. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. The Moffat's translation says it like this. For the word of God is a living thing. See, the word of God is living. The word of God is alive. We, you got to understand this. See, sometimes we, you got to fathom this. Some people can't fathom this, that the word of God, the Bible is the only book in the Library of Congress that's alive, that's living. This word is quick, it's powerful. I think the, the King James says it's quick and powerful. That word quick actually means alive. It means living. But this is the thing, folks. It will only come alive to you when you accept it and when you act upon it, when you accept it, first of all, and you act upon it. I, listen, I've been counseling for years. I've been teaching for years. And it's something I can tell in some cases when people aren't receiving what I'm saying and receiving what God is saying. And it's like it's like, you know, it's just like words going on a heart and heart. It's just like it's just bouncing off of them. They're not accepting it. But then I see those that do receive it. They receive it wholeheartedly and they begin to walk in it and they begin to act upon it. And God is saying this. Not only do you need to receive it, you need to act on what you begin to receive and what you begin to hear. This is going to be very important. He says now you're going to have to say, OK, God, because faith without works is dead, being left alone. So now I'm going to show you my faith by what I do my corresponding action to what I believe is what's going to cause this word to manifest. So now listen, when Peter said, Lord, if it's you bid me to come. And so the words of Jesus came out, said, it is I come And that word. The faith was deposited into Peter, but Peter had to step out. Listen, he could not play it safe and stay on the boat. He had to step out of the boat. And when he stepped out of the boat, he stepped out on that word that was spoken by Jesus. That was the thing that sustained him to walk on the water was the it be I come. And so when he said come with the C, he had one step with the O, he had another step with the M. He had another step with the E. He had another step. And Peter started walking on the word that Jesus spoke. If Jesus didn't speak it, the word would not have come in him. And if the word hadn't come in him, the faith would not have come in him to sustain him to have water walking ability. So I'm telling you, when God's word is spoken, it has enough power in it to sustain itself. All of creation, the Bible says, is upheld by the word of his power. And so you got to understand that God's word is powerful. Glory to God. Come on, man. I'm Shoot, I'm telling you. This is why it's so important that one word from God, one word from God can, can, can totally transform your life. One word from God. Come, Lord, is this you speaking to me to start this business? Come. Is it Judas telling me to now get involved in this situation? 
come. Lord, I've been struggling with this area. Lord, what is the call? Is Are you calling me to do this? He says, come. And I'm telling you, with the come will be the empowerment to get the job done. If God said it, you might as well stamp it. You might as well go ahead and put it on the calendar. That thing is coming to pass. Not only the written word, the logos, the logos, or also the rhema word of God. Listen, you better bring back up into your in your memory the words that God spoke to you. And you got to believe it that God, if you said it, I believe it. And that settles it. And so now my faith is at an all time high. I am in high expectation to see my God, to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Listen, I'm calling it forth. Every prophetic word that God has spoken to you, everything that you've been reading about, everything that you released your faith for, God is saying, you better not let it go now. It is too much time you put into this thing. And he says, it's time for the deep to call to the deep. I'm calling that thing out of you now in Jesus' name. Okay, come on, Mike. My God, I'm telling you, y'all better come on with me in this thing. Because God is saying this, it's time to step. It's time to step, but you got to believe. You got to believe God's word. You got, listen, a person is only as good as their word. See, you got to, you got to understand this. See, sometimes you are not taking the Bible literally. You're not taking him for his word. If he already wrote it down, it's already a done thing. There's some stuff people trying to pray against, but the prophetic word is already in the scriptures. That thing coming to pass. You can pray all you want to. He didn't already said these things are coming. You can pray against it. You can say you don't believe it, but he has already spoken it from the eons of time. And those things you're about to walk into what he spoke about years ago. You better hear this. You better. Boy, I just heard. I said saw something. God is saying you got to live in the future. So you might as well live in the future that you create with the words of your mouth. So you might as well go ahead and start creating a new future. You might as well go ahead and start speaking new dreams, new desires, new goals, new vision, new insight. I declare that I'm coming into my new season. I declare that all things are working together for my good. I declare that everything my hands touch will prosper. I declare that money coming from to me from the north, the south, the east and the west. I declare that my bank accounts are overflowing with plenty in Jesus. Listen, you better start speaking your future. You better start watch this because your future will become your present. And so you might as well go ahead and you might as well create a world that you go ahead and create with the words of your mouth according to the word of God. Hallelujah. Okay. You like, Lord, who Jesus, my God in heaven. You better, you better, you better say it. Come on now. <laughs> Somebody type in there, preach black man. I think I will. Glory to God. Now watch this. Watch this. In the book of Numbers 23 and 19. The book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19 in the New Living Translation. It says this. Mm. Mm. It says, God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. He, watch this. You got you to gotta remember this. Remember the gifts and callings of God are without repentance as well. God has not changed his mind about you. He has not changed his mind about what he spoke to you years ago that you failed to see just yet. He says, I didn't forget about it. My word is not going to fall idly to the ground. He says, watch this. So he does not change his mind. He has, watch this. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Listen, you got to trust God. You got to trust God. I want you to say this. Say, I trust God. I trust God. I trust God. I trust you, Lord. Listen, I know how it feels at times when all of the pressure hits your mind, when you by yourself and nobody's around you to encourage you and you got to encourage yourself. This is when you pick up this book. And this Bible, you begin to read it and you begin to declare what God said. That's why it's important to capture moments when God speaks to you, to write down things he's spoken to you spirit to spirit. And in your personal prayer time to go back and to remind yourself and to remind your God, he says, put me in remembrance of my word. You got to know this is how you know. This is how this extreme over the top favor, this extreme faith begins to take place. 
that God said that I could do this. God said I'm healed even when the doctor says there's no cure. I don't care what you say. I don't care. Listen, man, I'm so, ooh. It, man, it's time. I'm telling you, there is going to be an outpouring of the power of God like you have never seen because people are going to be stirred up to activate their faith and to see transformation and change. I'm talking about where doctors have to confirm. Science is going to have to confirm what's already taking place in the spirit. And so it'll blow some of their minds. And there'll be some doctors who will come into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ because of your testimony. God says, now it's time to be bold in your faith. Don't you back down because you're afraid that it ain't going to happen. Well, what have I said and it don't come to pass? Uh Uh-uh. It's time for you to let go of all of that stuff. It's time for you to have a swagger. It's time for you to have a level of cocky faith where you believe in God big for stuff. That listen, I don't care what people are saying. This is like, you've been saying that for years and I ain't seen it yet. Listen, I don't care. I believe it. And listen, listen. Okay, I don't want to be in the flesh. I want to make sure I'm in the spirit. But listen, there'll be some people that God will keep certain folk alive long enough to see what you about to walk into. People that doubted you, people that talked about you, people that, listen, they've been trying to curse you behind your back by speaking negative against what you've been believing for. God says, wait a minute. I'm going to do a snafu on them. I'm going to begin to elevate you in their eyes and put you at a table in their presence where you're going to start eating. And then they're going to start sneaking around saying, what you do to get that? Listen, I knew where you came from. And God is saying, now is the time for you to believe it. Now is the time for you to go forward. Listen, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Don't you stop. Listen, I'm telling you what I'm hearing. Okay, calm down, Mike. Calm down. This thing is rushing through me so strong. He said, listen, you better not back off now. If you were supposed to file that um, business license, you better go do it now. You better follow through what God has been speaking to you. Some of you have been waiting to see before you act. You've been trying to get the resources together to do what he told you to do. He says, if you do what I told you to do, I will cause the resources to attract to you. He says, why should I fund something that's out of order? Okay. If you were to go into a place and you were to see a vending machine and that vending machine had a sign that said out of order, would you put your money into that vending machine? Huh? Huh? Why? Because the sign clearly states this machine isn't working. It's not working properly. And if you're not working properly, then God has nothing to fund because you're not doing anything. He says, if you will begin to do what I tell you, I will begin to fund it for you. And God says this, I want you to try it again. But this time, he says, I want you to go ahead and prepare and you learn from the mistakes of the past. When you tried to open that business and you tried to acquire that property and you tried to acquire that land and you tried to get that thing up and running. He says this time, he says this time your pride will be removed. Now wisdom will be granted unto you information and knowledge to properly apply what you needed to do and to structure yourself for success this time. He says, do it. He says, do it. He says, do it. For some of you, you don't need a physical location. You just need a virtual location. And if you get the virtual, God will begin to add clientele to you to assist you and to help you and to come into now. What's what's the word? Patronize your business to now cause increase to come. Whatever it is, God got the answer for you. All right. (laughs) I'm telling you, you got to trust God. If you believe in what for a loved one. If you want your relationships right, you got to trust God. You got to take God at his word to say when you walk in love, this is how you demonstrate love. You got to trust God when he says, if you speak these things, I'll cause them to come to pass. You got to believe God's word when it says in Mark 9, 23, that all things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible. All things are possible. What does that word all mean? It means all, everything, everything. All things are possible to him that believeth. 
all things are possible to him that believe it. I was in prayer yesterday. And as I was praying, I began to pray in the spirit. And as I began to get into the heart of intercession, I just kept hearing that ringing. And I just kept speaking it for minutes that all things, all things, all things, all things, all things, all things, all things are possible. Come on, no, stop. Translate and meditate. All things are possible. What about my marriage? All things are possible. What about my children? All things are possible. What about my body? All things are possible. What about my mind? All things are possible. What about my money? All things are possible. What about that job? All things are possible. What about that house? All things are possible. What about my life? All things are possible. What about my health? The doctor just told me that there's no cure for this. All things are possible that him that believeth. And you got to believe God and take him at his word to believe what he has said to you. Believe him. If he said it, no, listen, then let me stop now. I don't want to just rile up your emotions. I want to sow this into you. If you read the scripture, you read it long enough, you speak it long enough until you convince yourself that this thing is true. Yeah. You got to stay with it. If you know you having problems believing it, you got to hear it. And one of the best people to hear you say it is you. Take that scripture, turn it into a confession. All things are possible for Mike when he believes. All things. So that means whenever the thought comes, remember, it's been too long. You made too many mistakes. Nobody going to take you serious. Nobody going to come and support you. Nobody's going to come do. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, the Bible says all things are possible. My God is on my side. He abides in me. He lives in me. He assists me. The callings of God, the gifts and the callings are without repentance. That means everything he put in me is still active. Everything he put in me is still fresh. Everything he put in me is still good. Everything, the calling is still there. The power is still there. Now I raise my confidence up to that level. And I don't care if God got to remove something and then replace it with something else. God, I'm expecting God to give me better than what I lost. Better than what I was previously believing for. I don't care if you've experienced evictions. I don't care if you've experienced repossessions. Whatever has been lost, God is going to bring better back if you can believe him for it. You better believe for better. You better believe for bigger. God is already transforming the house, getting ready for you to move into it now. He is already now. Watch this. You don't even realize that God is already setting somebody else up with a new job in a new state. And they're going to have to transfer and they got to get rid of their house instantly. And you're going to move right on into it. I'm telling you, you don't know what God is working on your behalf. You don't know what he's doing behind the scenes. You don't know what angels are working on right now because you've chosen to believe God. He said, listen, somebody say, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I believe. I believe. Glory to God. I like that God ain't a man. He should lie. The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. Do you, do you understand this? Let me, let, me, let me help you with this. Do you understand what this means? God does not have the capability of lying. Because whatever he says is. See, you got to come out of your natural human mindset. See, we can choose to lie because truth doesn't originate from us. We receive truth. Man, that's good, God. God is the truth giver. God is and always was and always will be. Everything exists in him, around him, and is supported by him. So even there is something that's no such thing as a three-headed dog. And God said, listen, you better watch out. There's a three-headed dog by your trash can. You might as well go ahead and see it and get ready to see it. Because watch this. There ain't no such thing as that. It is now. Why? Because God said it. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. Let me, I, I feel somebody still trying to process what I'm saying. If it ain't created, he can create it for you. If the job ain't there and God says there is one there, Listen, you might as well apply because the job is there for you. 
God will cause the favor and the mindset of the CEO of that company to now create a position that has been designed just for you when you show up for an interview. Man, I'm telling you, I've seen this happen. Well, we listen, we first moved here from um, from Atlanta, moved back to Richmond. And I'm telling you, I was believing for a job. I went into the office of a building that I used to work at a company I used to work for. I went in just to visit somebody. And I was still believing God for a job. Ran into an old co-worker and she said, Mike, she said, wait a minute. I just left a position because I got a new one. I can set up the appointment with you and the manager to talk. We set up the appointment. Manager gave me the job. A day later, they offered me, or that same evening, they offered me the position. Why? I showed up in the right place at the right time. God had already had provision for me waiting. He already had provision set up. Your provision is already set. You just need to move. What if I never went to the building? You don't know how God is maneuvering you now. And you got to be open to the smallest thing. When he tells you to get into the car and ride to the neighborhood, to get into the car and go and visit somebody, to pick up the phone and call somebody. You know what? You was just on my heart. Man, I was just thinking about you. I'm sitting here doing this stuff. God, I'm telling you, God is already orchestrating stuff. You've been praying out. It's time for you to move. And it's time for you to act. Hallelujah. Whew. Okay, my God in heaven. That's just number one. Hey, come on. Number two. I might have to end here today. My goodness. <laughs> to, 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 to develop this level of faith, and I started dealing with this a little bit, I believe, this past week, is understanding the reality of our redemption in Christ. Your redemption in Christ. You've been redeemed from the authority of Satan by the blood of Jesus. You, and when I, well, you know what? That, that word redeemed is an accounting term. It really means to buy back, to pay for, to reconcile the account of. It's like when Jesus died and shed his blood, it took care of the payment or the wages that death, that sin really owed us, which was death. Jesus paid that. And so now he says, OK, for death, I'm going to give them eternal life. For their sin, I'm going to give them my righteousness. I'm going to make them righteous in God's eyes by what I do, by dying on the cross, shedding my blood so that now I take the penalty for their sin and now they can take the reward for my righteousness. This is a powerful thing, folks. Our faith grows when we understand we have a blood bought right to receive what we're believing for. Jesus died so I could receive this. Jesus died so I could be healed. Jesus died so I can go to heaven. Jesus died for me to have eternal life. What? But wait a minute. Jesus died for me to rule and reign in this life as a king and a priest. So my faith in what the redemptive work of Christ has done what cause my really my faith, my belief in what he's done will cause my faith to be elevated to say, wait a minute, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I can't listen. I refuse for this resistance that comes up and see, listen, Satan is the God little G of this world system. And he's going to try to now shut down your advancement in life. But you're going to have to exercise your authority and your faith over him yes there's a lease that he has in this earth and his lease about to run up about to run out but watch this jesus died to bring us up to be seated together with him in heavenly places the bible says far above all principality and power so when i'm encountering a situation that i even know is demonically um influenced i have authority over that power that's trying to use people to come against me. So that's trying to use people to manipulate. That's trying to use people to shut down things. You better, you better hear what I'm saying. You better, when I start meditating on this, oh, I, I don't want to get across ahead of myself, but I, I want to show you something. I want to show you scripture to support this. And, and then I'm going to make a statement. And this is very relevant to what we're dealing with today. In the book of Colossians chapter 1. 
What time am I working with? Okay. The book of Colossians chapter one, verses 12 through 14. Now I'm going to read this out of the New Living Translation. And then I'm going to go to the book of Revelation. Here in Colossians uh, 1, 12, it says, Always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. So we've been brought out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. We've been transferred. A transfer is taking place. We're on the winning team now. We're on the winning side now. Who purchased our freedom, verse 14, there you go, that's that redeeming power. He purchased our freedom and then forgave our sins. Your sins have been forgiven. This is important because condemnation will kill your confidence. When you feel guilty about stuff that you did and when Satan tries to see, the Bible says this, that Satan is the accuser of the brethren and he will try to keep accusing you in your mind and bringing up old files, old things that you did. See, you don't qualify anymore for success because look at how you begin to deal with people in the past. Nobody is going to want to deal with you anymore because of what you did with them then. But listen, you got to say, I'm a new creation in Christ. Now, listen, some of those old people may not want to deal with you anymore. But listen, God will bring new people. He'll bring new situations. He'll get you to the place that you want to be at. Some of you trying to go into a new season with old vessels. And God is saying, I want you to go into new season with new friendships and new relationships in some cases. And so you got to be ready for that. And you got to say, listen, I'm, I'm sorry that you still feel this way about me, but I got to be like Paul. When Paul says this, he used to be Saul who persecuted and killed Christians. And then Paul had the nerve to say, I have wronged no man because I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away. All things are made new. And I will, re listen, I refuse to allow you to bring up my mistakes from the past to try to hinder me from moving forward. God prophetically spoke this word to me years ago. I was 16. He says the enemy is going to try to bring up mistakes from the past. He says, but you're going to allow the joy of the Lord to shine forth. And I so have seen that. I have seen Satan try to play mind games and try to play war games on my mind to make me think that I didn't qualify any longer for certain things because I made mistakes. But God is saying, listen, my mind never changed about you. Don't you receive what the enemy is telling you because you will hinder your progress and you will stay stagnant and you will stay in a place of purgatory where you will sustain you in a holding pattern because you so bound with the mistakes of the past. It's time for those things. Listen, it's time for you to loose it and to let it go and to forget those things and that the anointing to forget will come upon you and wipe out the memory of some of that stuff. And listen, the sting. The stain of the past, I commanded to be removed off of you now in Jesus' name. So what you messed up? God has given you another chance. So what you failed? So what? You, listen, you didn't do the right thing. God has given you new chances, new opportunities, new doors. And some of you waiting to go on somebody else's platform. God getting ready to give you your own platform. You waiting to work for somebody else's business. God giving you your own vision, your own dreams, your own money. Listen, God's going to say, listen, it's time for you to stack your paper up. New money. I speak to you now. New money. I hear that. New money. New generational blessing. I don't care if you are here. Listen, I don't care if nobody else graduated from college in your lineage. Listen, God says this. I'll get you the information that you need. I'll get you the degree. I'll get you to the place where you can own the university, doggone it, if you want one. I'm telling you, you got to believe me. Stop wallowing in your mistakes of the past. I'll pull you out of your pit in Jesus' name. Come out from among them and begin to believe God big again. Cool. Listen, I had to say like I felt that thing so strong. I could sense the enemy attacking people's minds, attacking them. And it's going to take strong anointing and strong faith and extreme faith to believe big again. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on you, devil. I'm on you now. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Cletus. Come on. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Satan hates this type of talk. 
He hates it. Listen, I can hear him saying, when you shut him up, when you shut people up like this, and he can't do nothing about it in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over you and your household. I plead the angels of God to be at camp around your homes, around your children, around your family, and nothing shall touch them, nothing shall bother them, nothing shall irk them, and I disrupt every demonic force, every demon I commanded to separate from your house now in Jesus' name. Whew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I sense it. The enemy has tried to hound you with mistakes of the past. And he's tried to shut down your authority by causing you to convince yourself that God can't do it. That it won't work for you anymore. You better drown out that enemy talk. You better cast down that imagination. You better come on over here and listen. Satan trying to get some of y'all to drown out your sorrows with liquor and alcohol, and now you secretly struggling with alcoholism because now you have not learned how to tap into the peace of God. You have not learned how to tap into the anointing of God that abides in you. I command even the taste of it to leave your mouth. Whenever you tempt it to go to anything in the natural to try to replace the supernatural in your life, I command it to be disrupted in Jesus' name. I command it to be disrupted. I command it in the spirit to be disrupted. I command it in Jesus name. Yeah, I'm coming for you, devil. I'm coming for every assigned demon, every assigned imp that has tried to touch the people of God, that has tried to touch our members, tried to touch our partners, tried to touch our supporters. I take authority over you now in Jesus name. Oh, Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I sense the power of God. I command expansion. I command growth. I command expansion and growth in Jesus' name. Yeah, new doors, new seasons, new opportunities. Expansion in territory. Expansion in territory. Elevation in the spirit. I declare it in Jesus' name. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verses 10 through 11. Read like this in the New Living. It says, then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. And watch this. It has come at last. Salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth. The one who accuses them before our God day and night. Ooh, watch this, though. And. You better get ready to shout. They have defeated him. Who defeated? The people that he's accusing before God day and night. They have defeated him. How? By the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. The King James says by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. I'm telling you, Satan has been accusing you before God. Well, watch this. This is why the blood of Jesus is so important. The Bible calls Jesus our advocate who is before the Father making intercession for us. <laughs> Glory to God. He is reminding God, Father, remember what I did for him. Remember what I did for Mike. Remember what I did for Raquel. Remember what I did for Alexis. Remember what I did for Stacy. Remember what I did for John. Remember what I did for my people. Listen, you got to treat them. Just like you treated me. Glory to God. They are heirs of you and joint heirs with me. They're, listen, my blood has been shed for the remission of their sins. So you cannot treat them according to their sin. You have to treat them according to my blood. Glory to God. And so I overcome. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of that testimony. That blood has delivered me. That blood has set me free. That blood has changed my mind. That blood has resurrected me. That blood has transferred me out of darkness into the marvelous. I, mean, I feel my preaching voice coming on me. <laughs> I'm telling you, God, he's doing something mighty in you. It's time for you to testify. It's time for you to testify. It's ooh, I, how I want to say this. It's time for you to pre-testify. It's time for you to start testifying about what's about to happen in your life about what people are about to see in your life. 
it's time for you to start saying, you better keep watching me because I'm about to progress at an accelerated rate. I'm about to progress in ways that you never thought. I don't care if it took me 20 years to get here. I finally got here. I finally got into the place where enough is enough. I finally got into the place where I've been fed up with not having enough. I finally got into a place where I've allowed this sickness and disease to hang around too long. I reject it in the name of Jesus and I command it to get off my body. I declare peace in my mind. I've struggled with depression too long and I command the peace that passes all understanding to guard my heart and my mind. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord is the strength of my life. The peace of God, the wholeness of God, the shalom of God rules in my heart. And I refuse, I refuse, I refuse to worry about anything. I do not worry. I'm at peace. How can you be at peace when they threaten to take away your stuff? How can you be at peace when you just came from the doctor and he gave you a bad report? How can you be at peace when they just downsized your company? Because I know he which have begun a good work in me shall complete it and perform it before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. If he got to go ahead and listen, if he did it before, he'll do it again. He got me that job. He got me that car. He got me that house. He got me that position and he'll give me another one if he got to make it he'll cause it to come to pass in jesus name amen and amen glory to god i said glory to god hallelujah sure yeah the blood of jesus is the basis of our victory but we got to add our testimony and our confession to it we have to stand our ground with the enemy because Satan is the God of his world, of this world, and he'll try, he'll try to have authority over you. He will use people to intimidate. See, this is what God showed me. He says he'll use people to intimidate and to scare you with language that will cause you to, to shy away from pursuing what is rightfully yours. You better watch who you're listening to. And that word language was very significant. He says it's the way they say it, what they're saying, how they're saying it. Uh-huh. You better watch people. You better, you better change your circle. If all your circle, you constantly fighting your circle for your peace. How you should be fighting your inner circle for your peace? They're supposed to be sustained, helping you sustain peace. If they're the cause of disruption in your peace, it's time to get rid of them. I can't talk to you no more. Your language is different than mine. How can two walk together except they be agreed? We can't understand each other. You talk below. I talk from above. Glory to God. Man, I talk from a seated position in Christ. You talk as a surface dweller. Uh-uh. I'm an ambassador. You better stop talking like a peasant when you've been crowned as a king. Come, man, shoot. Boy, you better hear me. I'm about ready to run through a wall here. You better hear me. Your belief is about to change your environment. Your language is going to change what's around you. I rebuke. I, boy, you better. Whoo! Every dog. Man, God, little breath fresh the conda. Every person attached to me is on the come up. Every person that's assigned with me is on the come up. You better go ahead and get ready. You better shout right now. You better go ahead and says, I'm on the come up. Listen, he, I'm telling you, the spirit of fire is being ignited in you. And that thing that has been dormant is about to come alive again. You better go ahead. You better get ready for miracle work and power. Yeah, 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 I hear this. You're going to have opportunities to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, but some people are going to have to fight through the fear that's going to try to hold you back from doing it because the thought will come, what if it don't work? What if it does? He says, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Believer, hey, man. 
Satan's going to try to use people to use language. He says, this is why we must not only be aware or knowledgeable of spiritual laws, but natural laws as well. God said that his people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. He says that they destroy because of a lack of knowledge. What, what do I mean by the natural laws? This is how I saw it. He says, my people need to be aware of how things function in this natural world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world, but we still are in it. He says, once you have understanding and application of natural laws, practices, and principles, and now you bring your spiritual to the table, I will cause you to be accelerated and go to a higher level. See, people in this world, Scripture even talks about it. They're wiser. This generation is wiser in how they function in their system. They know their system. But we got to know their system and our system. I'm telling you. Listen, I understand. Some people say you just got to listen. You got to know certain things. God is going to reveal certain things to you. Listen, it could be from tax breaks to laws. See, people sneak laws into place because they know that certain people won't even pay attention to it because they don't run in those circles. And God is about to raise up men and women, prophetic voices that will go into these areas of influence and will begin to call out what's been covered up all along. And you're about to see new laws transform and what's reversed and re some some reinstituted. Lord, Lord, help me with that. Help me with that. Was it reignited? Reinstituted? What's the word? One was reversed. Oh, reversed, not reinstituted, but instituted, implemented. I'm telling you, before they hit the floor of the Senate, there are going to be certain laws that's going to be exposed. There are going to be certain governors that are about to be exposed that have tried to shut down things, but things that have secretly been going on in their lives are about to be exposed to shut down the process of the law that they're trying to get implemented. Oh, man. That means now you're going to have to change how you do things. Not only reading spiritual books, but reading some practical things. How to manage real estate. Certain laws that govern it. Certain things. Yeah, it's good that you pray. But when you get up from praying, what is your understanding of laws? Are you zoned for what you're about to build? Well, God told me to do it. But you still got to know the laws of the land. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, but render unto God that which is God. It's time for your business acumen to increase as well as your prayer language. Ho, 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 glory. Yeah, yeah. Your intellect as well as your spirit is about to be heightened. That when the Holy Spirit begins to come upon your body, even as Daniel, in the book of Daniel, the Bible says that they were 10 times greater, but they were skilled in science. You're going to have to know some stuff. I'm telling you, the church has been elevated. Has been, yeah. Has been. And God is saying, I don't want you to be left behind. I want you to advance with. Move with the cloud. Don't be afraid of new technologies. Everything ain't the devil. Some stuff, yes, yeah, we know that in these end times, there'll be certain things. Everything ain't the mark of the beast. That's just you having fear of change because you don't know it. That's really ignorance that's feeding fear. Certain things we got to be mindful of. Everything ain't the devil. And because you say it's the devil, you won't advance with it. God will let you know. He'll uncover and unveil those things. I'm, I'm, I'm out of time today. Glory to God. Definitely ain't out of message. <laughs> Woo, Glory. Yeah, extreme faith, extreme faith, extreme faith. Even if you write down one big thing you believe in for. Exercise in your faith. Challenge yourself. 
challenge yourself to grow. Challenge yourself. Mm. Let me say it like this. You can't be lazy and go into this new season. You're going to have to restructure your life to fit where it is you're going. That'll determine if you really put it on in your life. Certain levels require certain sacrifices, certain disciplines. Don't be afraid of the new challenge because it'll become your new normal. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. Embrace change. Embrace change. Y'all know, y'all see certain things happening in the earth. We already here. Certain things are already lined up for Jesus to come back. The gospel is being preached all around this globe. Mm. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We bless you for this time. We thank you for your word. We declare and decree right now that it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you're here today and you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I'm going to keep doing the invitation. I'm believing for people to get born again and to get saved. Listen, come to this team. Come on this side. It's so much better. I'm telling you, eternal life, everlasting life, peace that passes all understanding, to have the ability to have God's love deposited in you and his nature in you, to do the things that he's created and called for you to do. I compel you, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. If that's you, you never made a confession of your faith, I just want you to pray this simple prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you were raised from the dead for my justification. I accept you into my heart and into my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, there may be somebody also, well, you're born again and you know it, but you've been lacking power in your life. There is no distance in the spirit. There's no distance. I know you might be in one place, maybe one state, another country, wherever. Listen, after salvation, there's another experience called the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Listen, you can experience that right in your own home, wherever you are. If you pull it off to the side in a parking lot, in your car, watching us uh, via your phone, wherever, you can receive the Holy Spirit right where you are in the privacy of your own home, in the comfort of where you currently are. Now, the Bible declares this. The Bible says this in the book of Acts 2, that they were all filled in the um, upper room. It was 120 people in the upper room. It was called the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit entered the earth. And he says they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a, a, rushing, a sound as a rushing mighty wind. Then appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They did the talking, but the Holy Spirit gave them the utterance, the ability to speak this heavenly language. Now, it's just this simple. Now, I'm going to show you and demonstrate to you what this is like. That I say, okay, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance in Jesus' name. Amen. Now watch this. I'm doing the talking, but the Holy Spirit who I just invited in to live in me is assisting me and giving me the utterance, the words to speak. The Bible also began to declare that further along in those passages that there were people around them of different nationalities, different um, sections. And they said that they heard the people speak in their native tongue and language. It was unknown to the people speaking it, but it didn't mean that it was just unknown to anybody. 
the people recognize, wait a minute, you're talking in languages you shouldn't be talking in. See, this is what the Holy Spirit begins to do. He'll give you this heavenly language to communicate directly to God. He who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. How be it in the spirit, the Bible says, they speak mysteries, divine secrets, wisdom. You also build and charge yourself up, according to uh, Jude 20, on your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Listen. This is a, listen, for you to live this extreme faith life, to live on another level, you need the power of the Holy Spirit to be an effective witness for Jesus. I'm talking about the transforming power. This, I'm talking about the same Holy Spirit who hovered a, across the earth before, in the, um, during creation. And when God said, let there be, boom, he went to work. He was there in creation. He's there abiding on it. He wants to abide on the inside of you. So... So for those that have never received the Holy Spirit, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. I ask you to dwell in me, to empower me, to strengthen me. And now I have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name, amen. Now watch this. Come on, let's begin to pray together. Just lift up your hands wherever you are. Begin to praise God in your language. The Holy Spirit is going to assist. We do the talk and he helps us. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. All right. Now, you can pray like this every day. This will help you charge your spirit up. It'll help you to pray for things that you don't know how to pray for. Now listen, if you stuck on words or don't know how to pray out of your own understanding, you can pray out of your spirit and begin to pray according to the situation. Father, I pray over my family. I pray over my children, over my career, ministry, business, whatever it is. And just start praying and the Holy Spirit will help you to pray. Lastly, if you don't have a church home, and you want to connect with us, and you want to join this ministry, listen, I recommend it to you. We love you. We want to just love on you and to teach you the word of God. Listen, if you want to connect with us, just simply send us a message. You can send us, a, DM us on uh, Instagram, here on Facebook, on YouTube as well. Say, I want to connect. We'll have someone from my ministry to contact you, how to obtain and maintain what you came to receive. Listen, y'all, we love you. We appreciate you so much. At this time, we also want to honor God in our giving. Um, at this time, there'll be some information that's coming up on your screen. Um, we just simply want you to just follow those prompts. The Bible declares, as you give, it shall be given to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. That God will cause men to give unto your bosom. So it's very important that we understand these principles. Also in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8, the Bible declares that if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. God loves a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in their giving. He doesn't want you to give grudgingly or of necessity or forced to give, but we simply teach you the word of God. And we pray that the faith of God will begin to stir up in you to begin to activate and to act out on that word. If you want to see your financial situation change, honor God with your finances, with your money, with your resources. And as you honor him, he'll honor you. And he'll cause you to increase. He'll give you witty inventions, ideas, concepts. He'll cause increase to come on your job, in your businesses. Whatever it is that you're setting your hands to, he'll cause it to prosper, grow, and work. Listen, whatever God is calling you to do, whatever he's telling you to do, do it. Pray. Ask him, Lord, what is it that you would have for me to sow? Just simply obey him. That's all I ask. Praise God. We love you guys so much. And we pray increase over your life. In Jesus' name. So you can just follow those prompts and sow accordingly. And as you're sowing, we're going to prepare for communion. This is first Sunday. Um, we do this every first Sunday. Um, a lot of times it's rolling in our credits and the um, announcements before and after service. And so every first Sunday, we want to honor God with the communion table. So at this time, while you're sowing and you're still giving, giving is still a form of worship. We're still in our worship service. At this time, we want to honor God in our giving, I mean, uh, with communion.
<clears throat> I don't always do this, but I'm gonna do this today. I'm not gonna take long with it. Out of 1 Corinthians, I wanna read this passage of scripture to you. Uh, 1 Corinthians, and it's chapter 11, verses 23 through 32. And it reads here, it says, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, or that's new covenant in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. So this is why we do it, to show his death till he comes, to understand the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. He says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But it says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Watch this, not discerning the Lord's body. So it's important. I want to just kind of settle this that once we understand in an unworthily manner, we understand that the blood of Jesus has washed our sins, cleansed our sins, but we wanna make sure that we understand properly and not taking it for granted that we understand that this bread or this cracker, whatever it is that you're using, is now representative of the body of the Lord, which was broken for us. He took on 39 stripes with the cat of nine tails for our healing, for our wholeness in, our, in every area of our life, his blood, that we have the juice that's represented will demonstrate will um, is a representation of his blood that was shed for us see if we don't understand that that's how we do it in an unworthily manner not properly discerning or understanding what this does so that now we're just taking it just eating and drinking but no we're doing this as a holy thing unto our god that we recognize you lord as now shedding your blood for the remission of our sins your body being bruised and battered and torn and scarred and torn up for us, for our justification, for our healing and wholeness in every area of life. And so now he says, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. This is why people walk in sickness and disease a lot of times, not rightfully understanding the rights that they have for healing and wholeness and then how to apply it to their everyday life. He says, but when we are judged, he says, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. That's why we examine ourselves to get rid of things in our life, to see areas that we know that we're not doing right in. It's like, okay, God, I judge myself. I judge myself in this situation. And I begin to say, I'm going to make the corrections in my life. He says, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. God gives us an opportunity to correct things in our life before he gets involved. The Holy Spirit is there to convict us and to convince us. He says, but watch this, you got to get it right. Because whom the Lord loves, he chases. It's just like me with my children. If I don't correct them, if they're doing something wrong, I really don't love them. And so it's important as a parent that God as our heavenly father, he wants to make sure that we're living this life because he knows the ramifications of doing bad deeds and wrong actions and you can get caught up in things. And so he loves us. This is a symbol of his love for us. So we want to honor him today. So now, as we honor our God, Jesus said it like this. This is my body, which was broken for you. As often as you eat it, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. Let's eat. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Let's drink. Amen. Praise God. Well, y'all, I'm out of time. Not, certainly not out of message. We love you guys so much. We appreciate you for tuning in today. We want to let you know that Jesus loves you, and so do we. And we here at Spirit of Our Fellowship, we're changing the culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. I declare the favor of God over your lives. I declare the peace of God over your lives, that the blessing will manifest at a strong and heavy rate in your life, that things will turn around for your good in Jesus' name. Well, y'all, I love you. 
On behalf of Pastor Rock and myself, we just want to say thank you for tuning in today. We love you guys so much. God bless you. See you next time. Peace.